What's up, everybody? In this episode, we have two goals, which is to talk about arguments passed into GraphQL to change what kind of data we're asking for, and second, to talk about mutations, which allows us to actually add data or edit data in our data set. Now, this is primarily a backend focused video, but regardless of what backend you choose or whichever one you're using, the way you do this in GraphQL is going to be pretty similar. You just might need to change that backend code to make the functionality actually work. So, here is what we've been working with so far, where we can request customer data data, ID, name, and industry specifically. We want to have the ability to pass in additional information in parentheses here, such as asking for a specific name being equal to some value here. So you might get something like customers by name or whatever it may be, and you pass in that value. This concept is going to be very similar to a details API endpoint, such as what we defined earlier on in the series, where you can get a specific customer, in this case by ID, but of course you can modify this to be by name. And just to show you this real quick, let me just get rid of this authentication requirement to simplify. And we'll visit API customers 49 and we'll just get a single customer back. We're gonna do the same kind of functionality, but with the name instead. You could of course make it by ID as well. So by the end of this video, you should understand how that works. The other thing I wanna talk about is a mutation. So here's an example in my history where we create a customer passing in the name update in the industry now, which was just, you know, some stupid example, but this is going to return a customer's ID and name, and this will be stored in the database. So then when you go back and get all of the customers, you should see that information. So let's figure out how we can define this in code. We will start with the arguments passed in. So we'll head over to our backend and we will go to schema.py. Anything we want to be able to do in our API will be defined here as a field. So for example, customer by name and we will assign this some value and GraphQL is a self-documenting API so you can see this documentation explorer we have this root type query and inside of here we have customers well as we add new fields they will show up here so we know exactly what options we have available to us and once we get to mutations this will show up as a new root type so not only can we query data but we can also change data so let's just define this as a graphene dot field and we're going to have to pass in a few informations here. Specifically, this is going to take the customer type, just like we have up here in the list of data, but we're also going to have to have the actual argument passed in, which we're going to assign to name, and the type of this, we'll actually use graphene types, so graphene.string, and required is true. So save, taking a look back now, we'll go into query, do a little refresh here and we'll see customer by name. The exclamation mark in the GraphQL definition means that the string is required. Now, similar to how I have this resolve customers, which is tied to getting all of the customers, we're going to have something very similar for resolving a customer by name. So let's define that now. Resolve customer by name. This is going to have the same parameters, so root info, but now we're going to have that additional one passed in. And now we just define the DB code to get a single element by name. This is where we're going to use our model and say customer.objects.get and pass in name being equal to the name argument passed in. So this one refers to the argument and then this is the name parameter, which is what we are comparing against in that model. Now we can say return, and that will give back the object to the API, so that's what we will get as a response. However, we need to make sure that everything is okay if we don't end up finding an object with that name. So instead of just having this, we're actually going to surround this with a try. And then we will indent here, and then we can catch the exception with accept. If there is something wrong, we can check for the exception type of customer dot does not exist. If that's the case, we will return none. And that should be it. Now let's give this a try, but when I make changes to the schema, I'll often do a refresh just to make sure everything is up to date with the documentation explorer and what kind of error syntax highlighting we get over here. So this should be good. And now what we can do is we can say customer and this is going to be camel case automatically, so customer by name, and we will pass in the name being equal to some value such as YouTube or whatever objects you have in the database. 
hit play. Return more than one customer, it returned three. If you put one that we only have one in the database, so for example, Slack, I know I only have one element there, we're just going to get that data back. So we actually have another problem, which is what if we get too many? So a fix for this is to actually replace dot get with dot filter and this will return a query set which we can then invoke dot first and this will just return the first element so if you search for youtube it'll grab the first one it finds this is fabulous if you just want a single customer but you know what if there is multiple customers with the same name well then what you want to do instead of returning dot first is to just return dot filter name being equal to name this isn't quite right because when we run this we're going to have a problem received incompatible instance yada 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 so what we need to do is we need to actually change this from a field to a list and now we should be able to get multiple elements back and you can see here are all of the ones with the name youtube i have some duplicate data just from testing it out but it's good to understand how this works now again taking a look at the query you can see customers by name and let's just do a quick refresh this will show now that this is returning an array of customer type. You can take a peek at the customer type and this is what you should expect from it. And this should of course still work if you just have a single element, but just to confirm that everything is working as expected, you can do that. Boom, we got parameters taken care of. Now let's talk about mutations, which is actually where things get exciting because now we can change data in our database and give that full CRUD capability if we wish. Now to do this is not entirely intuitive, but I'm gonna do my best to explain it. What we will do is in addition to having this query class we're going to have a new class called mutations and this just like query is going to inherit from graphene dot object type and I'll just put pass in here for a second to get rid of any problems this mutations in order for it to be seen by the graphene schema we need to pass it in as another argument here so we are just defining our root types we will say mutation and set this equal to mutations. Boom, so we got that wired up. Now, very similar to query, we're going to define some fields for what things we want to allow the user to do. As an example, we can create a customer and we will assign this some value. And we're actually going to have another class, create customer, and we will invoke dot field. So this class is currently not defined, so let's go ahead and define that. I'll actually do this above the query as I want to keep query and mutations closest down to the schema here. So we will define it here, class create customer. And this is going to inherit from graphene dot mutation. And inside of here, we're going to have a nested class similar to how we have a nested class here inside of the customer type. However, this one is going to be called arguments. And this is the data that is expected in order to create a new customer and these are going to be against graphene types. So string and industry is graphene.string as well. Now we're going to define a customer field and this is going to be a graphene.field passing in customer type. So very similar to how I have this query, we have these fields here and then we have functions defined that are kind of paired with these fields we're going to do the same thing for create customer so we will define a function called mutate and this will have a few parameters of root info and then the actual custom data we need so name and industry and then inside of here this is where you define the customer object and save to db so the way you do that is you create a new customer object passing in the name and the industry, like so. This will return a customer object, so we can assign it to some variable, such as this variable here, customer, which we can then invoke customer.save. And then we will return an instance of this class, create customer, passing in our custom customer object. So customer is this customer here. As mentioned, not super intuitive. I got a lot of this from the documentation and I'm still kind of like, wait, what are we doing? However, now that you have the basis, you can modify it to create new functions for mutation, such as adding a new customer. As long as you understand how to do that with Django models, you can probably piece together the GraphQL stuff with Graphene in Django and then just do the appropriate action with the Django models, such as creating a new one or deleting one or updating one. 
So let's save all this and make sure I'm not completely crazy. We'll go over to our site and we have a new root type, which is mutation. So we can go into this. We have the fields create customer. If you want to allow the users to do something else, you will just go ahead and create a new field, which you will see down here in the mutations class. So let's talk about now how we can add a new customer. So going off of the mutation example, we need an industry string and name string. We will say mutation and then create the curly braces. And inside of here, we're going to have create customer. You can get that to pop up with control space if you want the suggestions. Then we'll have the parentheses. We will pass in the name such as subscribe. Oh, that's a terrible customer name. Uh, maybe Coinbase. And the industry that Coinbase is in, we'll say industry and we'll just say crypto. This will have curly braces as well. And this is where we define what we want returned. So we can say we want a customer and the fields that we care about are the ID and let's just say the name. So this is how we define the mutation. Hit play and you can see the create customer was successful and the new customer's ID is 67 and we got the name back as well. So far so good. Now you may have noticed that we use this mutation keyword over on the left. Well, we can do the same thing with query, we just haven't. So for example, we would just define curly braces and then say customers, and then inside of those curly braces say what we wanted back. You could just the same prefix this with the keyword query. So you might see both of those. For mutations though, just putting those curly braces, you don't get that mutation as a suggestion. So I'm pretty sure you have to prefix this with mutation unless there's some other way to do it that I'm not familiar with. And what we can do is check out our database just to confirm that this information is in the database. You can see 67 Coinbase crypto. And there you have it. That is how you create a new element using a mutation. You could of course build out this behavior for updating and deleting data as well. The API endpoint slash GraphQL is going to stay the same. Now all you do is modify the graph query language that you're sending with that request. The clients for GraphQL are very convenient, specifically Apollo, which is what we are using, which can give the functionality to automatically make another request to update data on the page. So you don't have to worry about doing complex state updates manually in your React application. You can just initiate another request or you can even modify the local cache directly if you want to go down that route as well, which maybe we'll talk about some of these things in the upcoming episodes, so definitely stay tuned. We will be experimenting with some of these capabilities in the next episode where we will try to initiate a mutation from the front end. This is going to be very similar to the way we did our own use fetch to post data. We will have a function that is returned from our query. So here we will not only have loading error and data, but we will also have a new function to append data. So you don't want to miss that video. It's going to be fabulous. And if you don't want to miss any videos, which I'm sure you don't, you will want to slap the subscribe button. On our way to a mill, can't wait to get there. And thank you so much for supporting me along this journey. See you in the next one and peace out.